Grace and peace, my brothers and sisters. Grace and peace. My name is Brother Yehuda, and today's topic is part two of Cain and Abel. We're going to be in the book of Genesis, chapter four, verse three through five. And I'm going to read the verse. Verses. And in process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground and offered unto the Lord. And Abel, he also brought of the first thing the firstling of his flock and of the fat thereof and the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering but unto Cain and to his offering he had no respect and Cain was very wroth and his countenance fell now that's in the book of Genesis chapter 4 verse 3 through 5 now here we have the devotions of Cain and Abel in process of time when they had made some improvement in their respective calling at the at the end of the day either at the end of the year when they kept their feast of in gathering or perhaps an annual fast in remembrance of the fall or at the end of the days of the week the seventh day which was the sabbath at some set time cain and abel brought to adam as the priest of the family, each of them an offering to the Lord, for the doing of which we have reason to think there was a divine appointment given to Adam as a token of God's favor to him and his thoughts of love towards him and his notwithstanding their apostate, meaning not a, a, um, notwithstanding their strain away. Now God would try Adam's faith in the promise and his obedience to the remedial law. He would settle a correspondence against between heaven and earth and give shadow of good things to come. Now let's observe here that the religious worship of God is no novel invention, but an ancient institution. Now it is that which was from the beginning. We're going to go in the book of First John, chapter 1 and 1. First John, chapter 1, verse chapter 1, verse 1. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled of the word of life. That's in the book of First John, chapter 1, verse 1. Now, it is the good old way in the book of Jeremiah, chapter 6, verse 16. Thus say the Lord, stand ye in the way and see and ask of the old path where is the good way and walk therein and ye shall find rest for your soul. But they said, we will not walk therein. That's in the book of Jeremiah, chapter 6, verse 16. So. The Israelites was not trying to walk in the path that God was giving them. The whole, all through the through the Old Testament, it's about disobedience, and it fell into the people that's in, that's spoken about in the New Testament. Some of them they, they disobedience, and God is speaking directly with the with the prophets to tell them, and they telling them that they were not walking that way. They're not. They were not hearkening to His word. And it's what people are doing right now, because, you know, if, if a person is still saying that we are under the law of Moses, they are not listening to what the word of God is, because we're not under those. We're not under those laws right now. We're under Christ. Now, the city of our this, now the city of our God is indeed that joyous city whose antiqu ant antiqu antiquity, the antiquity, which is the oldness, is the ancient days. We're going to go in the book of Isaiah, chapter 23, verse 7. Is this your joyous city whose antiquity is of ancient days? Her own feet shall carry her afar off to sojourn. That's in the book of Isaiah, chapter 23, verse 7. Now the truth got the start of error and pity of profaneness. Now that is a good thing for children to be well taught when they are young and trained up times in religious services that when they come to be capable of acting for themselves they may of their own accord bring an offering to God 
Now, in this nurture of the Lord, parents must bring up their children. We're going to go in the book of Genesis, chapter 18, verse 19. For I know him that he will command his children and his household after him, and they shall keep the way of the Lord to do justice and judgment, that the Lord may bring upon Abraham that which he has spoken of him. We're going to go in the book of Ephesians, chapter 6, verse 4. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 4 and ye and ye fathers provoke not your children to wrath but bring them up in the nurture and abomination rebuke of the Lord so in other words don't don't try to be a a, a, a lion in the house and and, and provoking your, your child into into the wrath bring them up in a humble way so this way it can rebuke all abominations of the Lord. You don't have them doing abominational things. Because, you know, a lot of people bring their children up and they bring them up the wrong way. They bring them up into what the world is doing. Oh, I want, he's going to be a rapper. Look at him. He's three years old. Look at he got He got bars. He's rapping. Or look at her. She's twerking and she's only two years old. That's not the way. So then when they grow up, they think it's about, because they look at TV, they think it's about wearing half clothing and tight outfits and it's all confusing. Now that we should, every one of us, honor God with what we have according as God has pre prepared us. Now according as the employment and processes and the possessions were, so they brought their offering. Now let's see in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 16 verse 1 and 2. Now concerning the collections for the saints, as I have given order to the churches of Galatea, even so do ye. Upon the first day of the week, let every one of you lay by him in store, as God has prospered him, that there be no gatherings when I come. That's in the book of First Corinthians, chapter 16, verses 1 and 2. Now, our merchandise and our hire, whatever they are, must be holiness to the Lord. Not bringing up or having persons like we got these false preachers and pastors and deacons and reverends and bishops and priests. They out here collecting money from people and not putting nothing in for the foundation or for people that is in need. They're taking it and doing it, feeding their own belly, buying jets and going to the designer stores and spending it on themselves, not spending it on the fact that a person may be in need, a person's rent may need to be paid, a person may need food to eat, a person may need clothes on their back or anything, what it is. It just, that's how you spread the love. We're going to go in the book of Isaiah, chapter 23, verse 18. And her merchandise and her hire shall be holiness to the Lord. It shall not be treasured nor laid up for her merchandise shall be up for them that dwell before the Lord to eat sufficiently and for durable clothing. That's in the book of Isaiah, chapter 23, verse 18. Now he must have his dues of it in works of pity and charity, the support of religion and the relief of the poor. Now we must now bring our offering with an upright heart and with such sacrifices, God is well pleased. And that's the, the, our sacrifice will be loving one another, do unto others as we want done to you. Now the hypocrites and the evildoers may be found going as far as the best of God's people in the eternal service of the gospel. So they prey on the people that's that's humble and meek, and they want to they want to manipulate um, uh, manipulate them or deceive them and think that they're doing the wrong thing, but give to them because they're doing the right thing. Now Cain brought an offering with Abel. Nay, Cain's offering is mentioned first, as if he were the more forward of the two. Now a hypocrite 
may possibly hear as many sermons, say as many prayers, and give as many alms, and quote many scriptures as a good Christian should do, and yet for what of sincerity comes short of acceptance with God. Now the Pharisees and the publicans went to the temple to pray. We're going to go in the book of Luke, chapter 18, verse 10. Two men went up into the temple to pray, and one a Pharisee and the other a publican. That's in the book of Luke, chapter 18, verse 10. Now the, the different success of their devotion, that which is to be aimed at in all acts of religion, is God's acceptance. So in other words, you could be doing all this that you think that you're doing the right thing. I'm doing this. I'm going to church every Sunday. I'm going here. I'm doing this. And is yet, but the, the main thing is, are you accepting? Is God accepting you as a son of God? Is his child? So now if he's not accepting you, all that is done in vain. So in order for you, because if people that do things and they really don't mean it, God knows your heart. If you're not really meaning it, God knows that you didn't really mean it. So it's not accepted. So if you got to be really sincere in doing it from the heart. So man, think that because we may not know, say, well, oh, he looks like he's doing the right thing, but God knows. So I advise anybody that if you're trying to be a son of God, a child of God, be sincere and walk in the love. And be in, in the love and walk honorably in the, in the love because God knows. And you're not going to be accepted. You may be fooling people, but God knows. And that's when it's going to be like, I don't know you. Now, we speed well if we attain this, but in vain do we worship if we miss of it. We're going to go in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 9. Wherefore, we labor that whether present or absent, we may be accepted of him. So he said, whether present or absent, whether you're here or you're in the grave, you'll be accepted by God. Abel was accepted because he did the right thing. God saw him as a holy man. God saw him as a saint. So he was accepted. But Abel, I mean, I'm sorry, Cain, he wasn't accepted because he did his thinking that he's getting slick, thinking he's doing something and trying to get over. You can't you can't pull one over on God because God is the one that created you. God is the one that knows all. He sees all. Whether you believe it or not, he sees you. So I will get inclined with God. His word is his word is the word. His word is the life. No one gets through the Father but through Christ. Now perhaps I just read out of the book of Second Corinthians chapter five verse nine. Wherefore we labor that whether present or absent, we may be accepted of him. That's in the book of Second Corinthians chapter five verse nine. Now perhaps to a standard by the sacrifice of Cain and Abel would have seemed both alike good to man. And so oh, he gave him he gave him fruits. There was good fruits. He gave him a whole bunch of fruits. But God is not accepting that. God said you gotta get one of your best animals. That, that brings you money and be willing to sacrifice that for him. That's, the, that's the, the offering he wants you to give. Now, Adam accepted them both, but God, who sees not as man sees, did not. Now, God had respect to Abel and to his offering and showed his acceptance of it, probably by fire from heaven, but to Cain and his offering, he had no respect. Now we are sure there was a good reason for this difference. The governor of the world, though an absolute sovereign, does not act random choice in, dis in dis dispensing his smiles and frowns. Now there was a difference in the character of the person offering. Now Cain was a wicked man, led a bad life under the reign power of the world and the flesh and thereof his sacrifice was an abomination to the Lord we're gonna go in the book of Proverbs chapter 15 verse 8 the sacrifice of the wicked is an abomination to the Lord but the prayer of the upright is his delight 
That's in the book of Proverbs, chapter 15, verse 8. So in other words, if a person think that, you know, I know that he's going to accept this because I do this, I do that. That's an arrogant man. A humble man, and he's on his knees praying that as he's accepted is an upright man. It's not about boasting and being arrogant or thinking that you are in right. It's about being humble and hoping that you're accepted through God. Because a, a carnal mind is definitely going to be unacceptable through the, for the Lord. Now, in a vain oblation, we're going to go in the book of Isaiah, chapter 1, verse 13. And all the listeners, I want you to hear this and take this this scripture and write it down and look over it because a lot of people are really confused with these laws of Moses in these Sabbath days. It says in the book of Isaiah chapter 1 verse 13, bring no more vain oblations. Incense is abomination unto me. The new moons and Sabbath, the calling of assemblies, I cannot away with. It is iniquity, even the solemn meetings. So God is saying take it away because you're not doing it to please me. You're doing it to please yourself. The Passovers and all the sat it's all about vain glory. Man is doing it just to say that, yeah, I'm, you know, this is what we're doing. We're doing this, we're doing that. But there's no glory and there's no humility. There's no meekness in it. So there, it's not it's not love. So God don't want it. He said, take it away. But people still now they want to continue on and doing it. And God took it away. There's another way. There's a new way of life. Now, God had no respect to Cain himself and therefore no respect to his offering as the manner of expression intimates. But the, but Abel was a righteous man. He is called righteous. We're going to go. Uh, a, 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 he is called righteous Abel. We're going to go in the book of Matthew, chapter 23, verse 35. That upon you may come all the righteous blood shed upon the earth. From the blood of righteous Abel unto the blood of Zechariah, son of Barachia, whom ye slew between the temple and the altar. That's in the book of Matthew, chapter 23, verse 35. Now Abel's heart was upright and his life was pious. He was one of those, those whom God's countenance beheld. We're going to go in the book of Psalm, chapter 1, chapter 11. Verse 7, for the righteous Lord loveth righteousness, his countenance doeth behold the upright. That's in the book of Psalm, chapter 11, verse 7. Now, whose prayer is therefore God's delight? We're going to go in the book of Proverbs, chapter 15, verse 8. The sacrifice of the wicked is an abomination to the Lord, but the prayer of the upright is his delight. That's in the book of Proverbs, chapter 15, verse 8. So we have to understand that it says the sacrifice of the wicked is an abomination. So if you're doing wicked things, you got a wicked heart, and you're trying to give a sacrifice and saying you're giving this unto the Lord, it's an abomination. God is not even accepting it. But if you're an upright person and your prayers is upright, it's God's delight. He loves that. So just keep that in mind. We don't want to be falling short because we are here to learn. We are on this earth now to learn who God is, to learn Christ. Christ said, take my yoke and learn of me. My burden is easy. easy. My yoke is easy. My burden is light. So we have to understand that it's not about what we feel and think. Lean not to our own understandings. My ways is not, he said, my ways is not your ways. My thoughts is not your thoughts. Lean not into your own understanding because people are taking their own opinions and their own thoughts and getting tangled up in that. And no, they're not getting nowhere. All they're doing is deceiving more people and people are gathering in with these assemblies and they're not they're wasting their time because you're, you're following what a man is thinking and you're thinking what a man is thinking. So you got his thoughts. You don't have God's thoughts. Now, if you go to get the word of God, you're going to get his thoughts and his ways. So you're going to learn and understand how to walk in God's ways. And the only way you can do that is through Jesus Christ. So we have to understand that this is very important. Now, God had respect to Abel 
as a holy man and therefore to his offering as a holy offering. Now the, the tree must be good, else the fruit cannot be pleasing to the heart searching God. Now there was a difference in the offering they brought. It is expressly said, we're going to go in the book of Hebrews, chapter 11, verse 4. By faith, by faith, let's go again, by faith, not by your thoughts, not by your own ways, not by your doings, but by faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he abstained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts, and by it, he being dead yet speaketh. So he say when Cain when 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 Cain killed Abel, even though he was dead, he still spoke it and God heard him and knew that his brother killed him. He's supposed to be his brother's keeper. And 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 Cain got got nasty with God and and tried to tell him I am not my brother's keeper. He tried to, you know, like who are you? How dare you be able to t think you can say whatever you want to say to God without being holy, being arrogant? And he's the one that created you. It's like, it's, it, it's really bizarre. Now, that was in the book of Hebrews, chapter 11, verse 4. Now, Abel's was a more excellent sacrifice than Cain's, either in the nature of it. Now, Cain's was only a sacrifice of acknowledgement offered to the creator so in other words he knew that he had to offer something so he's like ah let me go let me give him this like like god is just anybody no you just can't give god he got to give him god what he wants to accept and if he's not accepting it then you got a problem so that's how that that that's how that go now the meat offerings of the of the fruit of the ground were no more and or or i know they might be offered in innocent but Abel brought a sacrifice of atonement. The blood whereof was shed in order to remission. So, you know, it has to be a blood shed in a pure, unblemished blood, not fruit. Fruit don't have blood. There, thereby, owning himself a sinner. He's showing, he's owning up to be a sinner. So this is another thing. We have to own up our sins and, and own up and, and let God know I am a sinner I am humble and and please accept me. This is what the, this is what the the begging, the pleading. God wants you to be in need of His blessings, not thinking that you know it or I'm already good. I'm all right. He, he's 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 going to he's going to accept me because this is what I've been doing the whole time. No, it has nothing to do with your fringes. It has nothing to do with. Your beard, it has nothing to do with the food you're eating. It has all this to do with your heart. And please understand that. Now, disposal, God's wrath, and imploring God's favor in a mediator or in the qualities of the offering. Cain brought of the fruit of the ground. Anything that came next to hand, what he had, not occasion for himself or what was not marketable but Abel was curious in the choice of his offering not the lamb not the lame nor the lean nor the refuse but the firstling of the flock so that was his firstborn of the flock and he gave that up killed his animal and sacrificed that to the Lord that's accepting the best he had and the fat thereof the best of those best. Now here, the Hebrew doctor gives it from the general rule that everything that is for the name of the of the good God must be the goodest and best. Must be of the must be of the best of the best. Now it is the fit. It is fit that he who is the first and best should have the first and best of our time, strength and service. Now, the great difference was this, that Abel offered in faith and Cain did not. <laughs> That's, and, and by faith, we are saved, not by what our doings, because we can do nothing to get us salvation or to be pleasing. We have to be obedient. Got to understand that as well. 
Now, there was a difference in principle upon which they went. Now, Abel offered with an eye to God's will as his rule and God's glory as his end and in dependence upon a promise of a redeemer. But Cain did what he did only for company's sake or to save his credit, not in faith. And so it turned into sin to him. Now, Abel was a repentance believer, like a publican that went away justified. Cain was unhumble, unhumble. His confidence was within himself. He was like the Pharisees who glorified himself, but was not so much as justified before God. Now, Cain displeasure at the difference God made between his sacrifice and Abel's. Now, Cain was very wroth which presently appeared in his very look, for his facial expression fell, which bespeaks not so much his grief and discount, dis, discountenance as his malice and rage. Now his sullen, churlish facial expression and a down look betrayed his passionate resentment. He carried ill nature in his face and the show of his facial expression witness against him. Now this anger bespeak his enmity to God and the indignation he had conceived against God for making such a difference between his offering and his brothers. Now he should have been angry at himself for his own infidelity and hypocrisy by which he had forfeited God's acceptance and his facial expression should have fell in repentance and holy shame and he should have fell face down to the ground to ask for repentance as the publican who would not lift up so much as his eye to heaven we're going to go in the book of luke chapter 18 verse 13 and the publican standing afar off would not lift up so much as his eye unto heaven but smote upon his breast saying god be merciful to me a sinner and this is how god wants you to come to him he don't want you coming to him think you know it all i got all the answers oh no i just just uh, listen humble yourself humble yourself and pray that you are accepted that god will be merciful on your soul that's in the book of luke chapter 18 verse 13 but instead of this cain flies out against god and if God was partial and unfair and, dis and disrupting his smile and frown, and as if God had done him a deal of wrong. So he's acting like God did him so, did, was, was wrong dealing with him, was unjustified with him. Now it is a certain sign of an unhumble heart to quarrel with those rebukes which we have by our own sins brought upon ourselves. So like in other words, if a person say, listen, you're not supposed to be doing that. That's wrong. Person, they got this new word. You're judging me. You can't, don't judge me. Judge yourself. Or, you know, the book, the Bible says, do not judge. It's not a judgment call if you see what the person is doing. Or you know. If you come and tell them, listen, that's the love. You shouldn't, this is what you shouldn't do. You shouldn't do that. God is not going to be pleased with you. And then you, when you bring God in and a person like, oh, you you know, you think that because you read the Bible. It's, it's, it's crazy. They lash out at you. So they don't want to hear it. And that's the bad part because they don't understand the love. They think the love is when you give them something. Here, I'm going to give you this. I'm going to give you some drugs to sell so you can make some money. I'm showing you love. That's not love. You're condemning the person. Now, the foolishness of man perverted his way. And then to make bad worse, his heart consuming against the Lord. We're going to go in the book of Proverbs, chapter 19, verse 3. The foolishness of man perverted his way, and his heart fretted against the Lord. Because that's the foolish man. It perverted his ways. Because he is thinking of worldly possessions that he's, in, he's getting the love. That's not the love. The love is you loving, being loving to one another you being obedient to the word of god you fall in line in line with the word of god in the gospel you fall in line with christ you doing what christ says this is where it's at
That's the book of Proverbs, chapter 19, verse 3. Now, his envy of his brother, who had the honor to be publicly owned. Now, though his brother had no thought of having any slur put upon him, nor did now insult over him to provoke him, yet he conceived a hatred of him as an enemy, or which is equivalent a rival. Now it is common for those who have rendered themselves unworthy of God's favor by their presumptuous sins to have indignation against those who are dignified and distinguished by it. So in other words, if you acknowledge a person that he's doing as his sin and you try to rebuke him to help him, they they envy that and they don't like that. They look at you like you are a, a wicked person, like you know, that you are you put yourself on a pedestal. No, we're trying to save you, to get you, to convince you to do not, to don't do it again. And this is the problem with these places, these buildings, so-called church. They're not teaching the people of their wrongdoing. Because there's a lot of people that's out there just, you know, they go to church on that Sunday and then leave out of there and take me to the liquor store. Or go out there and get into a, and be foul-mouthed and talking about a person. And it's like, what did you go there for? Uh, and you can't be going and saying that you come to hear the word because you, the word is supposed to convince you, convict you, and change you. That's why it's not good no once a week. You have to be in it all day. That's in the church, not going to church. You got to be in the church. You say, I'm going to church. You don't go to church. The church is your lifestyle. You have to be in Christ. Christ is the head of the church. In order for you to be in his church, you have to live an upright right lifestyle. Now the Pharisees walked in this way of Cain when they neither entered into the kingdom of God themselves nor suffered those that were entering to go, go in. We're going to go in the book of Luke. The book of Luke chapter 11 verse 52. Woe unto you lawyers for ye have taken away the key of knowledge. Ye entered not in yourself and them that were entering in ye hindered. So in other words that's in the book of Luke, chapter 11, verse 52. So in other words, they don't want, they're not going in themselves. So they, they're, they're taking away the key of the knowledge for other people to enter in because the other people are listening to them. So they hinder them from entering in because you're getting this false information on the word of man's feelings, the way he thinks. He's teaching the wrong information. And the people are really accepting this and it's more accepting then the truth, and the person don't want to hear the truth. They want to hear the lies or what sounds good. Oh, I want to be a part of this. And it's the hinders them. And then they wonder why so much is not going for them. They're not at a peaceful heart. Never mind the, the tribulation and the, the, the persecution and all the stuff that goes on along with this world. But your heart to be at peace because we all go through affliction. We're going to have tribulation. That's written, but he wants you to take it with patience and understand that. So if you're not understanding that the message that you're getting is the wrong message. So you're supposed to be at patience when these things come about. So you be at good cheer. You have to be at goodwill and understand it's still about being humble and meek and being faithful to your Lord. Now their eyes is evil because their master's eyes and the eyes of their fellow servants are good. Now envy is a sin that commonly carries with it both its own discovery and the paleness of the looks and its own punishment and the rottenness of the bones. Now that concludes the book of Genesis chapter 4 verse 3 through 5. We're going to end off with a prayer and then we're going to say I got a couple of more scriptures that I just want to read to you. Heavenly Father, we want to worship you in all that we do, including our daily routine, work and life. So teach us, Lord, to discern wisely and well what motivates our work. Help us to identify ways in which our works is adulterous and your spirit may we learn to give all that we are we give all that we are to you as we do our daily work 
May you be glorified in what we do, how we do it, and why we do it. Help me, Lord, to do in my work that which is most important, whether or not it is the thing that brings the most praise. Help me, Lord, to be faithful in my relationship, especially with my family. Keep me from getting so wrapped up in work that I forget the, the relation, the rational dimension of my calling. Above all, may I give first place in life to my relationship with you. May I live for your pleasure most of all. To you be all the glory. In Christ Jesus' almighty name I pray. May God be the glory as I walk, live, and pray in your image and likeness, the fruit of the Spirit. I come in love and leave in peace. Grace and peace to all the saints. Amen and amen. Grace and peace. Now I have a couple of scriptures that I want to cover with with you guys because, like I said, with these with, with this New Testament, where we in Christ, and certain things are written in the scriptures for our understanding. So that's where we know that we're not in the Old Testament. We're gonna go in the Book of Galatians, chapter three. Verse 24 through 26. Wherefore, the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ, that we might be justified by faith. But after that faith is come, we are no longer under the, a schoolmaster, for ye are all children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. So it's telling you what the law was our schoolmaster. The law was to bring us, to bring us unto Christ, the schoolmaster. So now we are not... We are by now by faith, we are no longer under the schoolmaster. So he's telling you we're no longer under the law. For ye are children of God by faith, by faith, not by law, not by the law, by faith in Christ Jesus. That's the only way to be saved. Now we're gonna go in the book of Hebrews, chapter ten. We're gonna read from one through eighteen. For the law having a shadow of good things to come. He's telling you how the law was a shadow of good things to come. It was a practice to get you started. So this way when the good thing comes, you understand it and you know how to oblige by it. For the law having a shadow of good things to come and not the very image of the things can never with those sacrifices which they offered year by year continually make the comer thereunto perfect. For then would they not have ceased to be offered, because that the worshiper, once purged, should have had no more conscience of sin. But in those sacrifices there is a remembrance again made of sins every year. For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and of goats should take away sin. Wherefore, when he cometh into the world, he says, Sacrifice and offerings thou wouldest not, but a body has thou prepared me, and burnt offerings and sacrifice for sin thou hast had no pleasure. Then said I, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me to do thy will, O God. Above, when he said, Sacrifice and offerings and burnt offerings and offerings for sin thou wouldest not, neither had it pleasure therein which are offered by the law then said he i come in to do thy will O god he take it he take it away the first what did he say he taketh away the first that he may establish the second he taketh away the first testament the old test so he can establish the second testament by the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of jesus christ once for all and every priest standeth daily ministering and offering oft times the same sacrifice, which can never take away sin. But this man, after he had offered one sacrifice, which is Jesus Christ, this man is Jesus Christ. But it says, but this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sin, forever sat down on the right hand of God. So that explains who this man is. He's who's sitting at the right hand of God, Jesus Christ. From henceforth, expecting till his enemies be made his footstool. For by one by one offering he had perfected forever them that are sanctified. Wherefore the Holy Ghost also is a witness to us 
for after that he has said before. This is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, said the Lord. I will put my laws into their hearts and in their minds will I write them and their sins and iniquities will I remember no more. Now where remission of these is, there is no more offering for sin. So it's telling you that we are not under that no more. Our sins are atoned through Jesus Christ. He's, he was the, the, the holy sacrifice, the true lamb that shed his blood for us to be atoned, to be forgiven. So now all we have to do is follow Christ and we are led in the righteous path. So I just wanted to read that so this way they keep, we keep in mind what's going on here because a lot of people are confused out there. I hear it, I see it, and um, I like to, to <clears throat> bring awareness so this way they can come out of that because you're not getting anywhere dealing with these people that are t leaving you in these holy days or these days, times, weeks, and months we're going here, we're doing this, this is this burning incense, relics, got menorahs and candles and all kinds of stuff going. It, 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 that's not pleasing to God no more. He don't, he's not He's not interested in that. He's interested in see how obedient you are in following Christ. How much love you have for your brothers and sisters. Now, I'm going to say grace and peace, my brothers and sisters, that would conclude this segment. I hope you was edified. Have a blessed day.